Jesse Osborne. What's going on, man? How's it going, buddy? Bro, I'm hanging in there, dude, like a hair in a biscuit. <laughs> I, I like them old sayings like that, man. Like, I uh, do, man. My, what was the one about the frog's hair? Uh, finer than a frog's hair. Finer than a frog's yeah, hair. Yeah. My dad says that all the time. I love those old school sayings. That's like me, that. man. Like I just like like I was saying earlier when you asked me how that water was, I said like baby bear likes it. It's just right. <laughs> it's not too hot, not too cold. <laughs> yeah, man. I, the, the old people just had like a a cool way of talking. I guess like that was just a lingo back then. Yeah, man. Like is well, and I guess it kind of just follows with the day. I mean, you know, we kind of got our own lingo now. But yeah. I mean, it's definitely like you said. There's just something about that old way of talking, man. It's just so much. It's it's a neater way of talking. I feel like, <sighs> the, the, and it's something unique to this area as well. True. You can't really go outside of here and ever hear that from somebody else. And I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of times I get a weird look from people around here. It's like. Hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. <laughs> like, what in the world? <laughs> so, but it's cool though, man. I guess that like that was like the old original way of like English. Ain't that yeah. like how the uh, how, what they say like the Appalachian talk is is kind of like the way they originally talked, like way yeah, back yeah. in the day. Yeah, because I think I read or um, don't quote me on this, but watch or read something somewhere that's actually like our dialect is more. Um, I guess it's closer to the dialect that our founding, like stuff like yeah. that, would have spoke than more proper, you know, English and stuff like that. So, to me, I think like it's kind of unique that we hold that, you know, what I'm saying yeah. that closeness to our, you know, uh, founding fathers and stuff like that, man, are just our originators, really. You know, yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, so many people want to like make fun of this area, like you said, like get a weird look for saying hair and a biscuit. But you know, like, hey, we're keeping an OG. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, George Washington probably said some cool stuff like that <laughs> for sure, man. It just wasn't written in the <laughs> written in any documents though. <laughs> nowadays, like, what's a, what's a cool saying nowadays? I, I guess you only got really like words lit. Fam, we, yeah. we've gotten lazy. We, yeah, you can't exactly. even say the full <laughs> word anymore. Like with fam, well, you're <laughs> three letters. You you can't yeah. say Ali. Like, is it that difficult? I but guess. I guess. Who knows? But I, yeah, it's it, kind. Of, you're right. It has gotten lazy in our slang. It's just kind of we short. But I guess it's kind of us. We're just getting lazy with it. Everything's shortened down. It's yeah. like, how can I make this shortener or short and simple rather than drawn out? I yeah. guess it's kind of. I don't know, man. I guess that's just today's world. Everybody's in a rush to get it out quick. <laughs> I think that, you know, you might be onto something there, like how everybody's in a rush. Because nowadays, the attention span of everybody is just so fragile and so short. Dude, I know. So I was literally thinking that earlier when we were kind of talking before this. I was, I was like, that's kind of the thing, is everybody's kind of on a, such a tight, and it's tension. You know, yeah. everybody walks around so tense that... You don't know how to take something sometimes or how something may come across from somebody. Yeah. And it's kind of, even those way with those old saying, you could say something to somebody that's kind of like, what? <laughs> well, that's kind of out of the way. And you're like, well, no, man, I meant that in the, you know, but like you said, people walk around yeah. with so much tension these days. It's uh, it's hard not to be, you know, um, walk on eggshells around people yeah. and watch what you say. That's why I'm thankful to live around this area, man, because I think that uh, yeah, there's still tension. There's tension everywhere, especially oh, yeah. nowadays. Yeah. But, man, like here versus a place like New York, it's it's night and day. Yeah, man. Know? Yeah. I went there a few years ago, and I don't think I'll ever go back. I didn't really. No. It, it was cool to mm -hmm. see it one time. But, man, people just walking by you, not saying anything, yeah. looking at the ground. It's a totally different world. And oh, it makes you sure. appreciate that, you know, that southern hospitality that people speak yeah, of that connection, 10 man. times more. Like whenever yeah. you're in a diner and the waitress comes up and calls you honey. You know, like <laughs> you, you know that you're about to get some great food whenever, oh, whenever yeah, that yeah. happens. Yeah, exactly right, man. Yeah, it's kind of um, yeah, it's kind of like you said. Just uh, and I've the couple times I've been in New York, man. You're right. Like I just <clears throat> I don't know, man. There's just something about it. Everybody's like it's they're in a rush, like kind of like we were saying, uh, you know. And nobody will take that two seconds out of their time to be like, you know, hey, how are you? Yeah. You know, what are you doing? You know, or anything like that. And it's kind of like we were talking one time, <clears throat> um, uh, me and a couple buddies about um, the movie Elf. The scene movie. where he's chasing like people down in the streets of New York, saying like, "Hey, are you saying you know stuff like that?" Asking, <laughs> talking to people. That was all real. Yeah, they yeah, shot that, that. You know, yeah. So, but and somebody and one of my buddies was like, "Well, how could they do that?" And nobody be like, "That's Will Ferrell." And I was like, "Because those people, like you said, they're walking with their head down, 
they're going somewhere. They're not thinking about man because they see that stuff every day. <laughs> Somebody yeah. you know whether it not be Will Ferrell, but a homeless man, whatever, running up to them asking them for money. So they're not even like they're just ignoring that onto their next thing. So you kind of can't even get that out of somebody because, like you said, they're just in a rush to go to their next spot. They could give two craps about what you have to say. But what a genius idea for them to shoot that scene Dude, that way. for real, though, Because, like, I, I, I didn't know that until I watched the... Uh, I got it on uh, DVD, and I was just watching the ball, like the bonus scene. Yeah, yeah, And they yeah, were talking yeah. about how they shot that. One of my favorite parts is the, the dude in the red jogging suit. That's that, the one, Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what I mean, I like, was looked exactly of. like Santa Claus. <laughs> and what are the chances of them just, like, yes. shooting random scenes and a guy like that for walking real, by? Man. <laughs> oh, it just made a great movie. One of my favorite Christmas movies of all dude, time. Dude, for real. So that's underrated, like, man. It, it really is, though. Man, and what's wild? There's an awesome Netflix series right now, man. It's called uh, The Movies That Made Us. I don't know if you've got a chance to check it out. I've seen it on there, but I haven't got a chance to watch it. That's where I've seen that. That's where they talk about it at. And uh, but it's it's interesting though because it's um, they do kind of behind the scenes, but it's more based on. <clears throat> how the movie got wrote, how it got into production, stuff like that. Yeah. So you kind of get to they're kind of like the movie was almost a flop, no one would take it, you know. And then finally, they were like, Will Ferrell had just had a breakout. Um, was it old school that he had? It, it was right probably before old that. School. Yeah, the first one of Another the kind of the movie. first like lead movies he had. And then they were like, so you're going to put him in a true lead role in a Christmas movie. <laughs> they were like, he just went from making this and you're going to put him in a lead row, you know, and it was like, yeah. well, I get, and then it, like you said, it works, man. It turns into be one of the greatest Christmas movies of, I mean, I think really of, I mean, I don't know, man. Well, you got the nat, like national well, yeah. like but, Christmas but, but, vacation. But what makes and, Elf kind of unique whenever it comes to Christmas movies is like it was a newer Christmas movie. True, whenever whenever yeah. we think of like all time great Christmas movies, like like you say, you know, National Lampoon Christmas Story. But all those were that is, yeah, you know, that is true. Ago. That is true. And yeah. nowadays, like I'm trying to think of like good recent Christmas movies. Grinch, Elf and Grinch, Grinch, That's yeah, it. man. Not the remake though. Hey, did you watch even, the remake? I watched a little bit of it, and even Tyler exactly the right. you couldn't save that you, movie. <laughs> you could only watch a little bit of it. I mean, it was just, <laughs> but why? I don't get it, DreamWorks. Why? Why did you even try? I know. But if you're going to do it, though, it's kind of one of those things that once you find someone who plays that role like Jim Carrey, how do you even try to replace in someone's mind the role of, you know, the yeah. voice of Grinch? It's kind of like, man, this just doesn't. It's nah. kind of almost like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Me and my girlfriend were just talking about this last night. I know you've had to see the original. Oh yeah, yeah. With Gene Wilder. Yeah. And then so the second with John. And like to me, <clears throat> the Gene Wilder version is definitely to me the better version of it. Um because and it's kind of like I told her is like not to knock Johnny Depp. He did a great job at playing the role he played as Willy Wonka, but I didn't feel like that was Willy Wonka. I feel like Johnny yeah. Depp's was a little too dark, a little too mysterious. Yeah. And whereas Gene Wilder kind of had that more um, childish, mysterious, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of light, you know. So I was kind of like, I just felt like <clears throat> the Gene Wilder version was definitely the better version because that's the, in my mind, the when I think of Willy Wonka, yeah. I, th- I assert it, or I sort it with Gene Wilder. So you know. Well, I think another thing that made it so great w- was Gene Wilder in a sense. But I think the, like actors back then had such a different way of looking at things that yeah, yeah. S- somehow just made them better. Because I was watching a, a interview with him. I'm a, I love Gene Wilder. Oh, I love great, I, man, I love dude. Young Frankenstein. I love Silver <laughs> Bullet. He uh, so many great movies. For but sure. I was watching a. Uh, interview with him one time and it was so genius and he thought about this and he said that if he didn't do this then he wasn't going to be in the movie but yeah. at the beginning of it where he's limping on the cane yeah yeah and yeah, then yeah. he does this like the, yeah, the tumble the, and yeah. then pops in front of everybody he said like he thought of that and he said that if he couldn't do that then he wasn't going to do the movie yeah. and the director said well why are you taking this so serious why do you need to do that he said because if i was to do that at the beginning of the movie it would automatically put it in people's minds that they didn't know if i was lying or not they didn't know yeah. what was real or not because in that movie how he does like the you know the contrast of he's this sweet guy that owns a chocolate factory yeah but he's yeah, also yeah. this like 
evil businessman type dude that we start seeing towards the end. You yeah, know, you, yeah, you yeah. don't know what is what. Yeah, exactly. And it all right. started with that one scene right there. Yeah. Gene was a freaking genius. Dude, man. for real, man. Like, dude, him and Richard Pryor. Oh, so <laughs> great, man. I listen, I love Will Ferrell and John C. O'Reilly, but man, that's just, that's a classic. I mean, there's, because yeah, that's, you know, that's what, three, you know, we've got Stir Crazy. Um, Silver Bolt was one, right? Yeah, like Silver that, Bullet was one, and then um, wait a hear, no, or hear No Evil, See No Evil. I haven't seen that one. Oh, man, where Gene Wilder is, uh, I can't remember which one's deaf and which one's blind, but one of them's deaf and one of them's blind, <laughs> and man, it is hilarious, dude. That's, S- it's Silver great. Streak, Stir Crazy, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, yeah. and Another You. I haven't heard of that one either. I haven't heard of Another You. That was 1991. That was the, the last movie. They but here, no evil, see no evil, man. That's that's a classic. Like I said, because I can't remember exactly which one's which, but one of them's blind, one of them's deaf. So that they're really trying to like help right each other out, man. Him and Richard Pryor and dude, it's just it's comedy gold, man. They were supposed to make five movies together. Uh, Richard was actually you ever seen Blazing Saddles? Oh man, that's a movie you can't talk dude. about much <laughs> anymore. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring that one up. Oh man. man, that is it's a great movie though. And if like you, if you, and if you pay attention to it, like it's a beautiful story about yeah. acceptance and people realizing exactly, their wrongs. That, like yeah, there there's that word is thrown around quite a bit in that yeah, movie. Yeah. But in the end, he's the hero and people are accepting. Like it's beautiful if you look at it from that point of view. Exactly. If you're looking for stuff to offend you or whatever like yeah that movie you can definitely find a few yeah of those yeah things. yeah yeah for but, sure but richard was supposed to be the, uh, the sheriff, sheriff yeah. in that movie yeah but that was at the time where you know richard had a lot of stuff going on yeah in his life, yeah but the, if i'm not mistaken he, he fighting. still helped produce or um if it wasn't producing, he helped somewhat in the making of Blazing Saddles, though. Yeah, I think it was like towards the end. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. But, he they're, but they're at the beginning of it. I mean, there'd be days where Richard wouldn't even show up on set and nobody could find him. So I that they just, that, yeah. I, I forget the guy's name that ended up playing the sheriff, unfortunately. But, but he did a great job, yeah, though, and man, like, for real. He, in that, like, he was such a new actor. Like, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. That was like one of his very first real roles and it was a yeah. lead role in a Mel Brooks movie <laughs> that has became a classic yeah an instant Absolute classic absolute classic and man killed it dude man. for real well it's kind of like and like thinking back on it it's kind of like one of those things like now it's like could you see Richard Pryor playing the sheriff though in in a way, but I'm happy that it turned out the way that exactly. it did. Exactly, because like as funny as Richard is, he's a little too white. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that sheriff row needed that kind of cool, you know, mellow, you know. And it's kind of like almost how Chris Farley was supposed to play Shrek. It's kind of like, could you imagine really? Shrek? Yeah, yeah. I there's never actually, heard if you that. go on YouTube, you can hear uh, there's actually screen uh, readings. Of Chris Farley doing the road or doing the lines for it, man. man. So like, could you imagine Chris Far even with him reading the lines, him being Shrek as much as you've heard Mike Myers be Shrek? Now it's kind of yeah. one of those things. Like after you see someone fit the role so perfect, then you think of how the other person is. I'm like, eh, I don't know if they could have as good as they are. Yeah. Could they have fit that role as good as that person did? I, and oh, I don't know, man. man. Blazing Saddles was like. Uh, that's like you said, man. It's just a groundbreaking movie, and like it literally broke barriers. And like you said, yeah, you could find stuff offensive in it, but that was the thing about it was it took an offensive term and made it, com- you know, what I'm saying yeah, it made it a yeah. comical thing to where it's like, okay, well now you can't really use this derogatory term as much against me because man, we're sitting here in the same theater laughing about it. Exactly. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so man. it kind of took power away from the word. Because we put laughter to it in a way, you know, so, and that's kind of why I really love that movie, but I wish more people would watch it because if you watch it, it's almost hard, man, for the, for the unfiltered mind just to watch that movie and not have a good laugh at it. Yeah, dude. And not laugh at the people in it, but they're all laughing at their self. I mean, it's the yeah. opening scene, for example, when they're mocking their self about singing the old, you know, the yeah. old hymns. And stuff. So it's kind of like one of those things, like you're literally watching people kind of like Richard's comedy mock himself yeah. and laugh with him at himself rather than laughing. Kind of Dave Chappelle does that a great way too, yeah. man, for and, real. And, and one of like the only like newer comedians that do that. I love that opening scene too, by the way, where they like throw the rope and get the get the the uh, the, the rail card. <laughs> yeah, hand card. Almost lost a four hundred dollar hand card. <laughs> 
But did you ever have you ever heard the saying that the world ended in twenty twenty twelve? Uh, I've seen those. It has, man. <laughs> but dude, no, like I, I, I genuinely think about it this way, like not to be like it's ending, but to th- or that it's ended. But I like, kind of think about it. It got around twenty twelve, man. And a lot of stuff changed quick, yeah. quick. quick. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> like, dude, like we went kind of like from having no Justice Warriors to Justice Warriors, and then we went from a not really, not everybody's kind of whatever to a really woke crowd, you know. And it's kind of yeah. like. A complete tidal wave, man, over the last 10 yeah. years, dude. It's kind of just really crazy. Like, Step Brothers really is, to me, one of the last, I mean, other, last mainstream kind of more, you know, like raunchy, raunchy yeah, yeah. movie. Because, obviously, you got the American Pies and all these other small independent movies and stuff like that. But to be the last, like, theater movie, kind of yeah. like a Blazing Saddles, Step Brothers is probably the last, man, really. Yeah, man, it's such great jokes in that oh, movie. In oh. that one, Talladega Nights got some good ones too, man. Yeah, like dude. that's that's got some stuff in it, bro. If you played it on TV today, it wouldn't get played. Parts of it, man. I know. I man. mean, like, and but, and but it was funny. Yeah, it was dude. Hilarious. Nobody, like we were just talking earlier, nobody had a problem then, and like it's kind of wild. I mean, in the last ten years, it's like I don't know. It's like somebody flipped a switch. Yeah, it's like. Not to use the term woke, but I guess everybody woke up and they're like, whoa, what? <laughs> what have we been listening to for the last, you know, whatever, how many years? But yep. in reality, man, it's like, like kind of like you were saying, nobody's brought up these issues. It's you that's brought up these issues, you yeah. know? And even then, like, there's no issue. Everybody's having a good time. Like, there's actual yeah. issues that are going on in the yeah, world. Yeah, exactly. Very and bad bigotry stuff that yeah, is going yeah, on in the world. Yeah, for sure. That, like, like, that, and that's what a lot of these movies is trying to point out. Like Blazing Saddles, a great example. You know, it, it was point, yes. it was pointing out how stupid that type of ideology is. Yes, exactly. And that's what it's making fun of. <laughs> yes. but people totally miss it. Yeah, they, it goes over their head, man, because they just hear that hard R and they're like, "Oh man, that's a ra-. and it's like, no, it's man, you're not dude. you're not getting it, dude. You're missing the bigger picture here." And, but then, yeah. but but if you try to explain that to people, then you're the bigot and exactly, you're what's wrong man. with everything. And that's and that's ah, what I try to tell people, aggravating. man. It's it's hard to debate with people now because we use such um such basic phrases and terms uh and it's kind of not to get on a political issue but i mean it's kind of just like if you use a phrase and then say someone says well i don't necessarily agree with that then you kind of depending on what the phrase is you sound like a prick if you don't necessarily agree with that yeah. But it's like, well, maybe I don't agree with exactly how you think we should do it. There's just some things that maybe we should tweak about that, or I don't necessarily yeah. agree with with this, especially in politics. And like, and that's just where things get. Uh, it's just, oh, yeah. yeah. But it's, but but who said that everybody has to agree with everybody? Exactly. That's, that's that's another that's thing. That's the that, great part about living in America, man. <laughs> yeah, we're a big melting pot of different yeah. races, people, and ideologies. Cause, just because I don't listen to, uh, you know, like. Indian music, I mean, doesn't don't mean that there ain't people that do. Yeah, exactly. There, right. There's some pretty cool stuff in it, I guess. But you know, like I, I listen to a lot of bluegrass. There's people. I have friends that don't listen to bluegrass. Yeah, yeah. We find other stuff to listen to together. Exactly now, guess, right. But everybody is just either their way or the other way, and it's yeah, aggravating, yeah. man. I hopefully something changes here soon i, just, I, I think people, that mel brooks needs to come back and save <laughs> everybody go. with you know 2022 the movie <laughs> and just make fun for of sure, everybody put us sure. all back on the same place some dave Chappelle in there theo yeah. vaughn uh, i mean i love Joey theo Diaz. Too. man there's a lot of good there, there's, Com- that, there's real comedy is still out there dude it is you just have to dig for it though and that's the sad part man yeah. it's like you get on facebook you might come across a couple good videos of some some low new comedians coming up or something like that but a lot of the stuff's dry man but yeah, now if you go dry. find if you got a little bit of edge to you and you go watch some theo vaughn or some joey d you know somebody yeah. in that realm man like there's some good comedians still out there putting out content on the daily man and these podcasts right here have made it even better dude yeah like i could i don't you watch theo vaughn any oh yeah dude. yeah I could this go watch the man talk. <laughs> could go watch the man talk to himself for an hour because he's just such a great storyteller, man. Yeah, and, and he's so funny too because like he can literally just talk and yeah. be funny. Literally, yeah. Like it's it's kind of wild, man. Well, it's kind of like I said, he's just a great storyteller. He just tell yeah. you a BS story from nowhere, and you'd be like, oh my gosh, dude! Like, where did you even think of that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and, and it's the same way with music too, man. I think 
that a lot of like the newer styles of music, like it's it's almost a copy and paste format nowadays. Whenever it comes it to is. like mainstream popular artists, for sure, it man. just gets so boring after a while. But if you really dig, man, you can find some good music. Oh, dude, out there. it's everywhere, man. It just takes a little bit of digging, and like I mean, it's. Uh, I don't know, man. It's kind of like you said. It's copy and paste on everything, and and you really don't. Uh, kind of like we were talking about earlier. You don't really get an artist a genuine what an artist wants to put out till about the third album. I feel like, yeah. Like, or just whenever about, they break that contract. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's what it comes down to when it when they break that yeah. contract. Kind of like Childish Gambino. Yeah. You go from rapping all that time, man, and then Redbone drops. Like I remember the day that I listened to that. On, it was on, it come out on Hot New Hip Hop the day I guess before it, like somehow it come out on there earlier so I re, I listened to it and I was like okay new Childish Gambino listen to it I'm like all right what, what is this man <laughs> like, this I, is not Bonfire this is not you know three thousand and five this is like. This is R and B, okay. Yeah, man. But yeah. then, like, you vibe to it, and you're like, okay, this is what he wants to do, though, because you listen to the next couple albums, like, all right, it keeps progressing yeah. into more of what he wants to do, you know. I, so. I loved that album. Man. Awaken My Love is such a good album because I was real. a big uh, Parliament Funkadelic fan growing up, yeah, and yeah. that's what that album was based on was that band when George Carlin and all that. If you look. They had an album called Maggot Brain. If you put Maggot Brain and Awaken My Love's uh, album cover side by side, you yeah. can de- definitely okay. tell the, uh, I got you. the, the, I got the you. influence. And, got you. and like Childish Gambino, man, he brings like a lot of newer, well, he, he brings older style music to a newer audience. Oh, and he yeah. does whatever sure. he wants to do. And yeah. I love it, man. Oh, man, me you're, too. You ever dude. seen Atlanta, his show, Atlanta? I've never seen his show Atlanta, but dude, him on uh, was it Community? Yeah, dude, that was he was great on there too, though, man. <laughs> and, and he had good stand up too. That's a yeah, guy dude, like yeah. I'm jealous of. Like, how are you that good at that many Bro, different for things? Real man, like he, when he writes, did that special, directs, that was crazy. Yeah, he writes, directs, acts, makes music, produces. It's it's how does he sleep? I don't uh, get man, it. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. I didn't even know he had put out that album last year. Was that last year or 2020? Oh, 2020 is when yeah, it came the, out. Yeah, what was it called? Uh, That's 19 point something. I can't. It was a weird <laughs> I don't know, album. man. Yeah. And, and I think that that had like a lot of a Prince influence on it. Yeah, it I all. Um, it, uh, did you listen to it all the way through? It one, all bled. Yeah, one all time. Of, yeah, yeah, one all time. Of it, bled, it, yeah. it was a good album. It was uh, my favorite I can't remember album. the songs that I like on it because they're all numbers. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, dude, there's like uh, there's two on there. The one with... The same year that he was in The Lion King. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, 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 he makes an I, album I of I can pull out numbers. my phone and, like, I don't know. I think it's, like, 19-something is a great one. And then um, the one he does with 21 Savage is real good, too. Yeah. Yeah, that one's a real good one. See, like, and that's, that's an actual artist yeah somebody man. that creates a piece of work a master a masterpiece yeah you know he, they put actual thought into it whenever we're talking about <clears throat> the newer artists you know like the copy and paste format that yeah, we're, yeah. that we're discussing i think that you know there's a difference between an artist and a superstar as, yeah yeah as some definitely, people like definitely. to say yeah, th- there's sure. some people that want that fame, fortune, and to have that cool music video. And then there's some people that don't care about what everybody else thinks exactly. and just yeah, want to yeah. do what For they sure, want to do. It yeah. might not be a hit all the time, but your fan base is going to appreciate it. And you never know what that's going to influence later down the road. Yeah, yeah, like when yeah. Kanye made 808's Heartbreaks. Yeah. That, you know, auto tune wasn't a big thing at the time. And it was. It totally changed the format of hip hop. Nobody, people like some. A lot of people didn't like it at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nowadays, whenever it comes to hip hop and what you hear on the radio, you have to go back to that album. Yeah, that started it you all. Eight oh eight. Yeah, and almost every track now, you know, I mean, exactly. It's like, and auto tune, yeah. and you know, like, and also like it brought pop to hip hop. Yeah. Uh, before that, you know, like you just had <clears throat> Missy Elliott and Three Six Mafia. Like it was rap, hip hop, like that. Yeah, yeah. Th- there, there was go. nothing. Yeah, it was bet- more rap and hip hop hadn't really come together yet. That's yeah. What, yeah. That's it and, and, was more just rap was rap, the gangster rap, and then you had the hip hop portion on doing their thing on the side. Yeah. 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 And he really brought that together for sure. So whenever it comes to music, 
I've heard about this thing called 606 Entertainment. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, yeah. So for the people that don't know what's going on with that, tell them what that's about. Well, man, uh, so it's a uh, music studio that we've opened up. Uh, it's located um, right directly above Wright's Barbershop in uh, Prestonsburg. So it's on, uh, if you don't know where Wright's is, if you know where Billy Ray's is in Prestonsburg. Yeah. Uh, if you're going down the, the street there to Billy Ray's, it's literally a big uh, yellow building on the right, or it's on, it's on the corner there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's upstairs, man. And um, it's for right now, it's just a one room uh, studio. Um, but well, it's one room, a recording room, and then an engineering room. But we also have a workspace room, and then eventually building on a lounge to it. Uh, nice. So what we what we're working with is um, the barber shop, uh, or the building itself. Literally, is about a twenty five by twenty five. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So the bottom, obviously, the barber shop, it's all open space down there. And then once you go upstairs, it's kind of. It used to be an old dentist office back in the sixties. That's kind of cool. wild, man. So, like, it, actually, in one of our storage closets, it uh, used to be the storage closet for the dentist room. You slide open one of the things. There, we were up there cleaning. There was a bunch of like moldings <laughs> for dental stuff. Whoa. Yeah, from like back in the sixties. It was crazy, and uh, yeah, like still had the overhead lamp in the room where the chair was. What did and you stuff. do with all that? Uh, actually, I had a man, dude. He came up there and he wanted one of the light fixtures. He got that, and then while he was there, he said his uncle wanted those dental fixtures, so he took them. I don't. I mean, I was like, go ahead, man. I have no use for nineteen sixties dental Somebody fixtures. Somebody out but. there has that in their mouth right now. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I, I, I guess if you clean yeah. it good enough, go for it. Yeah, man. exactly. Go for yeah, it. so That's vintage, um, vintage so, teeth. Um, that place hadn't been touched, man, in like twenty years. And uh, when I come along two years ago, um, so Rice Barbershop was owned by Gary Wright. I don't know if you yeah. know it, Gary at all, but but Gary was a big music man. Uh, I mean, heck, there was a B uh, B three organ set in the corner of the barbershop forever, man. A 1963 B3 organ, oh, dude. I bet that sounds beautiful. It sounded beautiful, but it was pain in the butt to pack out of there, man. That thing was a yeah, beast. Damn thing, <laughs> heavy dude. So, uh, but actually, man, it's housed right now at uh, Mark Stevens Studio um, up Allen. He's doing restoration on it for us right now, which I do not have any intentions on lugging that thing up those steps to our studio. <laughs> so, so Mark will probably get those honors of keeping keeping the B three because I can't play organ anyway, so yeah. it's in better hands there. But um, so Gary was a big music man, and that place hadn't been touched upstairs in about twenty years. And um, <clears throat> so I went to clean it out, man. And uh, actually, uh, Aaron you know, Hoover that you've yeah. had on, man, he. Uh, he was uh, he was with me one day and he was just like, man, what's upstairs? I was like, dude, it's nothing. It's just trashed, like it's it's junked. And he was like, well, let's just go look. And I was like, all right, whatever. So we walk up there and I'm looking around, man, and I'm like, dude, you know, I was like, this place is like literally, it's one piece of glass away from a recording studio. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, dude, it's an old dentist office. So we've got the when you come up the steps, you walk right in. There's two doors you can come into the engineering room, which would have been the secretary receptionist area in the Mm -hmm. middle of the building. And then you can go in the one door of the corner, which would have been the waiting area. So in that waiting area in the receptionist room, there's a window, you know. So we literally put up a piece of glass, man, and uh, we started there. So the waiting area is the bigger portion. That's the recording room. And then the engineering room is obviously in the middle of the building there. Cool, so, yeah, man. I mean, it's a it's a pretty do- it's it's been a work in progress, but uh, it's kind of hard when you're trying to do the shop <laughs> all yeah. day and then do that in the evening. So. so, so is it already opened, or when are y'all um, opening? So, what we're doing right now, man, is we're taking bookings for February because um, we still got a little bit of cosmetic work to do. Like I said, man, this building was built in 1916, and Whoa. that upstairs hadn't probably been touched. And when I say touch, I mean like somebody just literally up there living, like not trying to spruce it up, fix it up, nothing, in probably yeah. 20 years. So before that, like I said, the dentist office hadn't been in there probably since the 70s, since everything up there had been functional. So, I mean, like I said, this would have been probably a year now or close to it, getting into a year now worth of work, trying to restore yeah. <clears throat> what portions of the building we're even using because we're still not using like two of the rooms. So, I mean, we've kind of got a little, like I said, a little bit of cosmetic work left. Um, still a little touch or, you know, a touch bit of equipment to come in. But other than that, man, we're hoping to be going by February, taking bookings oh, and smart. everything. So, so like, uh, what made you want to start your own studio? What's your background? Um, So, man, like, 
I've been singing as long as I can talk, and I got into the uh, the Kentucky Opera Junior Pros when I was about six years old, and uh, I sang with them until I was 12, 13, so I spent about eight years in it. Wow. Um, so pretty much grew up around music my whole life, and not really saying grew up as in my uncle and daddy played. I grew up professionally around, you know what I'm saying? I spent, yeah. literally spent my summers and winters were spent two to three days at the mountain art center all day long wow. <laughs> so just engulfed in it man and like obviously loved it so and man when i whenever i left there i kind of fell off with it for a little bit i had a band in high school for a little while and after that man i kind of just i took off you can you know life gets the best of you you yeah. know you start you kind of sadly enough forget the dreams and start worrying about reality yeah and uh so and uh, the more i thought about man i was just like dude music is it a feasible career for me probably is it something that i want to put i know how much drive that takes i know how much that takes to try to make it big man and it's like it's kind of sitting there thinking like do i really want to put that much into my life Mm -hmm. to maybe one day i get 35 years old and it's like dude i'm still just hitting that rock every time you know what i'm saying i yeah. can't break through and so i was just like man you know we'll find something else but now i've been able to come back to it you see what i mean yeah. so it's kind of full circle man so now i've come back to it and really with the whole intentions with this man when it started was i looked at it for people like aaron and chase and those guys is like man if you guys want to go do something you could go to the mac I and mean, you could go to mark you know mark's a great guy has an amazing studio and it's like he gets you a great sound yeah but can mark go in there and chop it up you know do all the stuff that you're wanting to do for this rap stuff for hip-hop stuff is he going to be able to do that or is anybody else in these studios around yeah. here going to be able to do that so Obviously, I'm not a rapper. I can't do that. <laughs> that's why I wish Chase could have been here. But that's kind of my – him and Aaron are kind of my other, you know, half. So, like, that's what they kind of cover for me. Uh, and then I cover kind of more of the, the live instrument, live recording kind of stuff like that. Yeah. So um, – but that was kind of the go, man, was like these kids have nowhere to go to express themselves and do their art forms, you know. And if they do, they're going to get charged an arm and a leg. Yeah, and there's no high school kid around here, or even college kid working around here that's going to pay a hundred dollars an hour for a session. Yeah, so we thought, I mean, you know, what could what could we reasonably charge, still make a decent profit, and have fun at the same time, man? And like, so we're like, well, twenty five dollars an hour. I think that's pretty reasonable. So yeah. that's kind of where it's going to start out at, man. And like I said, with the more experience that we gain, sure, that's liable to grow. Um, but we always want to keep it reasonable because that's the whole point of the place. Mm-hmm. It's not kind of like you said earlier. It it wasn't started with the intentions where I'm trying to make money. Like I literally have it for a passion that I'm trying to help everybody else. I don't want to yeah. try to, you know, like I said, I could charge 50, 75 an hour, but I mean, I'm going to get the same business as the Mac gets yeah. <laughs> and that's no diss to them. You know, they have their, their niche, they have their clientele, but we have to kind of look at the, at the wider, sp- at the wider scope around here and say, okay, how many people can around here can afford 25 an hour and how many can afford hundred. But, but also, yeah. like you said earlier, I, I love Brennan and Mark is a fantastic guy. Yeah, but, yeah. but you got these people like they, they know the music that they know. Yeah, that, exactly. When, whenever it comes to you know hip hop and rap and yeah. this the newer wave of music that's coming in, some of these uh, producers and uh, engineers around here may not be as familiar with that art form. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be sure. hard to get the sound that you're looking for as an artist. Yeah, yeah. But if you got somebody that knows that well, then you can get that sound. Yeah, exactly. And, and you right. know, like it's and, and it's and it's all good when if you want to make a great country record go to nashville if you yeah, want to make an yeah. amazing hip-hop record go to atlanta like there's places and people that know their stuff and i love how you're giving these newer artists who's wanting to do newer styles of music a place to go and do that yeah 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 like i said man that was kind of just the whole intentions with it and and it's kind of like i told the guys when we got into it i said look I said, I know we know probably maybe 10 or 15 rap guys around here right now that are doing it that we know of. I said, but, I said, you guys, I said, you're not ready. I said, this is going to be a live band place. Yeah. <laughs> I said, because I said, you got to look at the area we're in. I said, you guys are going to know some guys that do that. I said, but, I said, how many, there's 10 times more bar bands playing on the weekend. I said, so, you know, we're going to be doing country, rock, 
you know, all that stuff. I was yeah. like, so, yeah, but that's what we need to, man. Like, there's a ton of bar bands out there that just can't go. They want to cut a little maybe four-song EP or something, but they can't afford to do that yeah. for four hours of time at the Mountain Arts Center, you know. Versus yeah. what they could get for us at, for four hours, you know, $400 would be, you know, three days worth of work. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a... Kind well, of, well, it's great to have both, man. Like, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like just to get started, to get that money, to get those great recordings yeah, from yeah. a place like the Mountain Art Center in Brennan, like this is a good place to start that venture towards that. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, Times are rough, man. People ain't got a lot of money. So it, it's it's great that people are going to be able to afford this because, I mean, you're going to be making people's dreams come true, dude. Exactly, man. Well, whenever they yeah. whenever they have a song of theirs that they have yeah, on yeah. their phone or a CD in their car, if people still yeah, that they do went, that. Yeah, that they went and recorded, you know, themselves. Like, it's, yeah. it's a big thing, man, for people. Yeah, man. For real. And, and so many, especially younger people, that's a dream that would never come to fruition. Exactly, man. And, and now, and with what you're doing, people are going to be able to do that. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, these younger artists that don't look into it, they don't realize how expensive a good record is to put out. Yeah, you're yeah, You're paying yeah. producers, you're paying engineers. And, I mean, it ain't just, I mean, some guys can maybe knock it out in a few hours, but if you really want to put some time into exactly, it, man. it takes it a ta- few days. It, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's not just a... Uh, it's not just go in there and record it and be out in an hour and yeah. call it call it a day. Like it's no, it's not it as simple as that, like man. No, no, not it at don't. All. So where'd you go to like learn the stuff that you know? Like when it comes to producing and engineering and all that uh, good stuff. Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. Uh, we have, really, none of us have any kind of technical schooling or anything for it. Um, but like I said, it just um, with my years of experience, my musical or you know my ear for music and stuff, along with chases and errands and all that. Um, that's really kind of what brings us again to that low rate. Because we're also at the same time that this bar band's starting out, we're starting out. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's kind of, we're, we're charging a reasonable rate because at the same time we're getting experience with you, we're, you know, you're getting yeah. experience with us. So, like, um, right now, man, it's kind of just, I hate to say it this way, but it's almost experimental. Um, but it's an experimental in a way that we all have ears for music. So it's not like, uh, let me just try this and see how it sounds. You know, yeah. it's kind of let's get it till it gets right, and then once it's there, you know, it's there. We're not kind of like, all right, I know exactly what I need to do right here to do yeah. this, but we can tweak it till it gets there. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. But it's it's kind of like you were saying earlier. It's like sometimes that progress can come out way further in the end than what the technical schooling can. Yeah. Because somebody might be able to tell you, yeah, puts this number in these hertz. Da da da. It's like, well, okay, that's all cool and fine and dandy, but what what if I have this type of vocalist or what yeah. if th- he's got this tone or this tone it's like well then you know so to me it's kind of if you've got the ear it's way better than having the knowledge I like to make this point to people yeah, see yeah. I, I about wasted a fortune of money going to Full Sail University there in Orlando oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. back when that was like a really popular thing. You don't hear much about that place anymore. Yeah, Full Sail but is not really advertising like ten, ten years ago, though, man, like anybody who had a dream in making it in music or Video, entertainment anything, or anything, yeah, anything yeah, yeah. like it, it was Full Sail. <laughs> but then I started like looking into it, and people were like, you know, by the time you graduate this course, everything's changed. Yeah. That there, there's new plugins. There's new mixing software. There's new ways to go about things. It's a forever changing industry. Yeah, literally. And, I mean, there's there's uh, Blackbird Studios. Now that that would be a good place because they do it quick. I think it's only like a six month course, and you yeah. already got to know your stuff before you go there. You just I learn you. what you need to learn. But whenever it comes to getting that degree, sometimes you are well, you are much better off surrounding yourself with knowledgeable people and spending days on YouTube and oh, Googling. Yeah. For real, and, man. and the big thing is real life knowledgeable people around you because it's a forever changing industry and it's there's something new to learn every single day. Yeah, so I mean yeah. like, like just because you have a degree doesn't really mean much no. in today's world. No, man. <laughs> Not at all. Well, and it, what's funny, what always cracks me up is people think that it like that it matters so much. It's like <clears throat> I know somebody that 
when I open a business, and they're like, I'm going to go to school and get my business degree. I'm like, why? It's like, well, I need it open. It's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Just, <laughs> just open. Get on the on the Kentucky pass, business passport tonight and file for your business license and your tax ID number. You've got the business. And you're you're open, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't so, know. So, so many, I guess, I don't know where they get this idea. Maybe it's school. school man. Yeah, school. I, I guess it is. I guess. They try to tell me for 12 years that I should go do something in college. I'm like, no, it's not meant for me. Yeah. So and then, and then so like when I left college or when I left high school, I went. I was going to fly planes, man. I was over in Hazard working at the airport training to be a pilot. That's cool. Yeah. So I mean, that's why I've had a wild beret. So I you know left that and then now I end up in barbering. So I mean, it still didn't go to college, man. So I end, I end up going to barbering and now I own two businesses. I own my barbering business and I own my studio. So I mean, it just goes to show you, man. It's like you don't need a degree to do things. No. And it's kind of like Elon Musk is like, what's the point in college when, like you said, you go on YouTube and watch anything you want? Yes. You can watch any professor teach a class about anything today. Yeah. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. I, I will say that if you're wanting to be an open heart surgeon, yes. then you should <laughs> definitely please, go to college. Don't please you, go to college. Don't YouTube that. <laughs> go to college. But there are so many you know really great fields to go into nowadays yeah where man. you just don't need it exactly. because a lot of people man it's hard to afford college yeah like i forget how many hundreds of thousands of dollars i was about to pay full sale oh, and dude. god Ridiculous. bless i'm so glad that i didn't do that yeah. now but i mean like like, like you're saying there's other ways to do things, and I love how it's now being pushed that you don't need college to be successful. Yeah, and a lot of people, all you man, need is drive. Yeah, you exactly. Need that passion, right. and exactly. if you got that, then that most of the time can be ten times better than having a degree. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and it well yeah, not most time, every time. Yeah, and, 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 because and, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't put it to use. What good does it do you? Yeah. you know, if you sit at the house all day playing video games, go work your nine to five, but you don't put any of the knowledge that you had that day to good use, I don't know, man. Yeah. It just feel like a waste. I, I love how people's like, oh, there, there, there ain't there ain't no time to do it. Well, if you yeah. look, if you look really looked at your day and you were looking at all the times you were just wasting, you yeah. know, looking at your phone or like I said, playing video games, watching TV. Yeah, man. There's time. You're just wasting that yeah. free time that you do have. I just sold my PlayStation, man. That's man. no lie. Like because it's just like you said, I'd already been sitting and doing that. So like we started the studio working on it in. May, June, somewhere in there last year. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, I, where I'm barbering, trying to do it at the same time, man, it just become a hassle trying to juggle both, trying to, especially during the fixing up process. <laughs> that yeah. was more of a pain than anything. Now I'm in the fun process of making music. So I love that. But yeah. when it was up there trying to, you know, build desk and do this and all that, I was like, ah, hey, man, whatever. But um, so, like, when we first got into it, man, I was playing video games every night. And I kind of stopped doing the studio, kind of quit working on it. Yeah. And like when I once I got back into it this time in the last two or three months, I was like, man, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Like, and I kind of thought, man, I kind of when we were talking about our forefathers earlier and about the length dialogue and stuff, I was like, what did they do? If you, if you know, if you yeah. went to work and you did your work all day and you come home, what would you have done, man? With a, in front of a fireplace, maybe a quill and yeah. you know piece of paper maybe a book and maybe see instruments it. see that yeah, see, that's, yeah that's exactly. why i think that, like, that's why i think this area has some of the best country and bluegrass <clears throat> music in the world yeah. is because that's all we had like, yeah. like you didn't have playstation you didn't exactly. have you know virtual reality headsets and stuff yeah. like that you had a banjo that was passed down from your great grandpa and after you got done in the field that's all exactly. you had to it's do. all the entertainment you had, man. Yeah, and it's all about what you put your focus and energy on. Yeah. And you know, like how you sold your PlayStation. I sold my Xbox a few yeah. years ago. And one of the best things I've ever Dude, done. I'm man. telling you, man. I one spent the, and that's the thing is like, do I do it? it's kinda like we talk uh, we talk about all the time. It's like, granted, every night that we're up there, is it a productive night? I mean, I would say it is. We're always learning something while we're up there, even if it's messing around. But um I don't know. It's just like I, I just couldn't imagine sitting at the house now 
sitting yeah. and playing PlayStation when I'm like, no, I know I could be here doing this. Yeah. Or at least learning something new or trying something new or getting out of my comfort zone. Because that's the thing, and that's what I love now, is like, especially with Chase, I wish he was here. I've totally brought him out of his comfort zone. Yeah. He's more like indie pop rock type deal. And I'm like, dude, let's make some funky stuff, man. <laughs> you know, like, let's make some groovy stuff, like, yeah, with a hard bass line. You know, let's make something groovy. So that's what, like, every night now, man, it's just fun, you know. But but that's the problem, too, though, is everything's easy to do when it's fun. Yeah. But it's the hard part that everybody's like, man, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that part. I don't want to clean up. I don't want to build that. I don't want to do this. And, you know, and I guess that you need those people to do other stuff. Exactly. That's what I always say. There's always nine to fivers, man. And that's why I never bash anybody that wants to work a job because everybody can't be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Because if everybody's an entrepreneur, then there's no there's no employees. Yeah. But everybody likes that. It's kind of like I told him, but there's a guy going into or want to go into barbering. And I was like, man, like, it's great. I said, everybody wants to own their own business. I said, but owning your own business, do you like going home in the evening and leaving work at work? Yeah. This ain't for you. Because when you go home and people are still going to call you yep. and ask you and message you, and even if they don't, you're sitting there thinking, man, like, well, could I do this? Could I charge this much more? Could I yeah. do this different? It's always on the mind. And so I said, there's always, you got to have those nine to fivers that just want to put at five o'clock, works at work. I go home and, you know, do my yeah. thing. So, uh, and you know, but you got to have them. Yeah, man. Every position needs to be filled in the world. Yeah. There needs to be yeah. music producers. There needs to be janitors. Everybody yeah. has whatever category they fall into. And you can also get bored and try out different stuff, too. Exactly, That's another man. reason why, like, college, you know, it's for some people. But I know so many of my friends that picked a degree to go into whenever they were 18 years old. And now that they're 25, they're like, I hate this. I, I, I'm, I'm thousands of dollars in the hole, yeah. and, I, and I don't even like this job yeah. anymore. Yeah. I mean, like, if you want to do college down the road, do it then. But, like, figure yourself out a I say, bit. to me, my thing is I think everybody should take one year between high school. They should take a buffer year. Yeah. One year between high school and I college. Agree. Actually, even if you can't find a job similar to what you think you might want to do, just work a job. Mm -hmm. See what it's like to go do that nine to five every day and then say, okay, what would I like to do with that nine to five every day? I've seen what it's like now to come home from work, go to work, do that pattern. What would I like to do in a routine every day? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's like, I guess one of the ways to try to pick, you know, pick out something that you would like to do is like, let me go work a job, what no matter what it is, and then see what I would like to do for that yeah. time of the day, all day, every day. Because what is Groundhog today, every day? I tell yeah, people man. that. <laughs> and you know that. Yeah. It's different people. Same with my business, different people every day, but it's still Groundhog's Day. It's still yeah, work. Man. You still get out of the bed like, man, work. Once you get here, you're like, all right, let's do it, man. I'm ready to go now, you know? <laughs> well, I'm happy that you found what it is. Well, another thing that you yeah. want to do, man, I think that this is going to be great for the younger artist and, and and people that didn't think that a dream like this is possible. You're now making that dream come true. It, it, it really is a beautiful thing, man. I wish you nothing but success, and I can't wait to see what the future I holds for you man. man. Yeah, like I said, dude, just to kind of tag it up, there's like... Like, you know, like you said, not everybody thinks it's feasible to do it. Because I guess when you look at it at the broader scope of things, you see like, well, you know, not everybody can be a Kanye. Not everybody can be a Metro Boomin. You know, not everybody can do this, this, and this. But it's like, yeah, you maybe you might not make millions at it. But say you're somebody like me who's, say you can go work a job and you can save up four or $5,000. Because to be honest, to start up a decent little studio, it's a little bit of money. Yeah, it's a but lot. you don't got to drop nothing heavy into it if you want to. If you, that's the thing though. It's having the ear for the music, and once you're able to get, you got the equipment to get a good sound, then you can tweak it to get the right thing. So, yeah. it's kind of one of those things. Like, but you can see that dream is like it's kind of. I just had to kick him in the barber shop. Literally, man, it was wild how it worked. Two weeks ago, he comes in. I didn't even bring it up to him. He starts talking to me about, yeah, man, I, I make music. I'm starting. I'm. I want to be a music producer. Or no, he I, he says he's getting ready to go to, or he's in the middle of for a sophomore. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what are you going to do after high school? Man, I'd like to make beats. I want to be like a producer or something. I was like, dude, <laughs> if I got it for you, man. <laughs> I was like, listen, when we open up, come up. You know, when we've got sessions going on, whatever, I'll let you know. You can come up. You know, and kind of intern. You know, just kind of get a view of things. 
But for somebody to see something like that, though, it's like, yeah, maybe these guys aren't making millions every year. Maybe they're not even making six figures. But if they're making twenty five dollars an hour, oh. do something that they love to do, man. Yeah, man. That's Cash all, that's money, all matters, like, man. Exactly. What What else could you want out of life? It kind of shows you, like, okay, maybe I might not be the big booming guy I want to be. But I can make a name for myself. I can make money, you know. Hmm. And that's kind of my thing, man, is like I want to show everybody that, yeah, you might success is all in the eye of the beholder. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like all in what you man. see it, dude. If you, if you think success is a million dollars and, and Kanye's fame or whatever, then that's, that's success. But to me, I see success as I'm eating, dude. I'm doing mm. what I love to do every day. I'm getting to do the stuff I want to do. And like I said, I do it all on money that I make. Still having fun, you know, yeah, how to get to do what I want. So, and that's the important thing, exactly. Man. A, man. Lot of, a lot more people need to realize, yeah, that. yeah, they miss that big time when they're trying to find a career, man. Huh. They but, do. But for the people that like, want to get some studio time whenever y'all open up in February, where do they go to do that? So, the best way right now, man, is to check out our Facebook page mm-hmm. that's 606. So, that's OH6. I like that entertainment, too, by the way. yeah, because way so the way I thought about it, man, is uh, we were up there thinking on names, and I had a guy in uh, see, I went to Barber College in Ashland, and so it's the tri state, so I've got guys there from Ohio, West Virginia, and all that. Well, this guy from over in Huntington, man, he uh, he was in there one day and he said 606, and I was like, Back Yeah, out. he said, <laughs> He's like, I was like, Yeah, I said, uh, we don't even, we don't even have, we don't even use the, the actual number. It should be six zero six. There's no O in numbers. Wow. Six O six. I never thought about it. <laughs> yeah, that <way>. exactly. <laughs> so that's kind of where we were like, okay, we're going to spell it how we say it because that zero is a zero. It's not an O. So six O six. So yeah, it just makes it look cool too. Yeah, it, exactly. It makes it pop. It's something you haven't seen before. But like I said, when you read it out, that's how you would say it. It's six O six. So. But they can get up with us on that Facebook page, man. Also, my cell phone number is on there for right now. Because so with the shop's history and Gary Wright, he knew everybody, man. So they had to shut the shop phone down because people still call him. So we don't have a shop phone right now. My cell phone's on there. You can text or call that. Or you can get on there and message the Facebook. At some point, though, we will have online booking available. Nah. So you'll be able to there get on there and kind of see what's available and book it yourself. Uh, and then, I mean, granted, sometimes you might need to call us to fill us in on what's going on in within that session, but you can at least be able to check our availability on what we'll have going on then. So, but, uh, but yeah, man, any, any questions anyone has, they can literally get up with us and I'll do the best answer it right now because that's kind of the thing, man, is like music recording is the one thing we're doing, but it's also building the artist theirself. Mm-hmm. So, especially if I have an artist in there, because I mean, there's going to be some people that's like, man, I just want to cut this track for my family, you know, whatever, and that's all yeah. I want. But like I said, you got some bar bands, man, they're like, hey, we, we want to make something out of this. Well, have you got a Facebook, a Twitter, Instagram, Reverb Nation? Are you on all this stuff? No. Okay. We'll do the marketing for you. We'll set you up. And when I say that, well, when you're recording this, say this single you're about to release, we're going to do the marketing. Well, let's make the promotional video, the 30 second clip to run on Facebook ads through there. Yeah. So doing some a little bit of that, a little bit of promotion and marketing for that part. Also helping out with the distribution because you wouldn't believe it, just in the time we've announced it, how many people's hit me up. It's like, will you be able to get me on iTunes? And I'm like, well, yeah. It's a, yeah. But it's just some stuff, like, especially in the older generation, they don't know exactly what to look for, what to get into. They're still stuck on how do I get a CD made. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, but man, no, nobody listens to a CD anymore. But um, but it's kind of, it's it's helping out with the distribution and then also we'll be doing music videos as well. Cool, uh, so, and that's not something, I've got a little hand on the videography part, but Chase is real big in, into the editing and all that stuff. Yeah. And if you do message us interested in music videos and you want some examples and stuff, I'll be happy to share those with you and you know, show you Chase's work that he's done and stuff. But we've got all the equipment right now to be doing the music videos and stuff like that. Um, so, like I said, I mean, it's all really just... It, we're compiling as much as we can into that 25 by 25 foot space above Wright's Barbershop. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, seriously, But, dude. man, from what I've seen, though, it looks like an awesome spot. I think that people are really going to dig. And like I said, man, I think this is the beginning of something very promising. Oh, for and, and, sure. And I'm excited, man. I, I, I appreciate really it, man. For real, dude. Like I, like I said, our, we've got big goals in, in the long run. And I hope, and that should be everybody. Everybody should have long-term goals that are huge. 
Um, and nothing is ever unfathomable. You know, everything's possible. There's yeah. a song, song I loved from, um, it's a, it's the Cinderella theater play. I remember it as a child going and watching it at Gene Valley Theater, but there's a song in it called Impossible. Things are happening every day. And it's true, though. Mm. Nothing's really impossible. Everything's are happening every day, man. We don't yeah. know. We always, because think about it, just as soon as you say something's impossible, somebody ends up defying it somewhere. Yeah. So, Life's a magical thing. Yeah, man. man. So, impossible. like I said, we're jellyfish just, shun, shouldn't exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're just we're trying to build everything we can on top of it, man. Uh, entertainment wise, because that's kind of been my hit and premise that I've been trying that I want to try to go for as an entrepreneur here in Eastern Kentucky is to try to shoot for the more entertainment side, man. Because, yeah. like you said, you do comedy. Name me a comedy bar around around here. Yeah, exactly. It's not happening. And like that's my thing, man. Is like there's such a niche. For that small venue, there is a niche for that, and that's the next step. <laughs> I don't want to give nothing away, but no, for real though, that is that's the. I would love to have a place, man, that is that kind of a small venue, big, just big enough for a comedy bar, small acts, stuff like that, man. Yeah. And that's kind of the end goal. Six oh six Entertainment would like to end up hosting events, producing stuff, you know, promotional. Like, well, everybody talks about how this area needs stuff like that, but nobody does it. Exactly. So, so I'm, Thank you. I'm so thankful that <laughs> you're actually stepping up to the plate and doing this, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it, man. I'm gonna swing for the fences, you know. So, and and but my and my kind of that's why I really appreciate you having me on here, Eli, for real, man. Because yeah, this is no my problem. hope is on reaching other people, maybe my age, even a little older, me or younger than me that maybe says take some initiative and say hey man you know i've got an extra two or three thousand in the bank right now and i know that's hard for some people to say but say you do or say it's not all there right now but say man i've got this idea and i know of a place it could go start working towards it man like anything especially it's what i tell people around here what's beautiful about this place and nobody sees it but it's like you said nobody tries to go for entertainment and i see this place as a clean canvas man to paint whatever you want on it Mm. I don't care if it's been painted a thousand times. People will love it. You oh can do whatever God. here. Nobody's got it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, yeah, there's comedy off Broadway and probably three or four other little comedy joints in Lexington. So you can't really go there and be like, I'm the fresh new thing. It's been done a thousand times, but you can come here in Pikeville and it's never been done. It'll be the hottest thing in town. Yeah, man. So that's what I'm saying, dude. It's a clean canvas and nobody sees it that way. They see it as more of a depressing place where nothing's at. I need to leave. And it's like, no, man you want to make money and build a business this is it now we might not have the factory jobs or nothing bringing in huge bukus but obviously there's money people's going to lexington and huntington and spending it every day yeah like so like i said man it's just the biggest niece like you said everybody preaches entertainment but nobody wants to bring it and that's the biggest problem for but, real, man. But y'all are doing it, man. We're doing it's it. Six oh six. Six oh six. We're yeah. doing it, bub. <laughs> Jesse, thank you, dude. Eli, I appreciate you, man. For real, dude. For real. And folks, we'll see you next week. Y'all have a good one, guys. Boom. There we go, man. man. Killer, dude. Killer. That was good.